Hello everyone, so today I'm just going to go over how to do a basic FFT uh, function on a uh, continuous time signal. Um, I know that uh, many of you haven't really gone through uh, finite um, methods for Fourier transforms, um, and so I figured since uh, it was on the lab that I should probably do a quick little video to explain how you're supposed to go about actually doing the uh, you know FFT. So uh, the first things first, you want to set up some of your variables. So for the time being, I'm just going to do, um, I'm going to set my carrier to 6K. And um, when you're doing these discrete signals, they're based off of the sampling um, of that signal. So you're not looking at the total time continuous signal. You're looking at discrete points you know, that make up that total signal. Um, and the way the FFT works is that it, it uses that uh, sampling frequency in the individual samples to build up a, a complex uh, uh, or the build up the frequency domain information. So um, I'm going to set up a, a sampling size. Now I already set my FC. Uh, for Nyquist criteria you need to have at least two times the highest frequency component of your signal and in this case it's going to be FC since uh, you know or plus whatever the uh, um, uh, any kind of sidebands are. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to oversample by a significant amount. So I'm going to set my FS to be ten times uh, my um, FC. All right, another thing you have to look at is the total number of samples that you're going to be doing this FFT over. So I'm going to do this over 30,000. I'm just kind of picking these numbers kind of at random, but you can find, you can kind of play around with this once you get a chance to, um, to do it yourselves. So I, next I'm going to set up my time uh, signal. So I have to set up, so it's uh, give me zero uh, to the length minus one. Um, this way um, I'm setting up my uh, total, um, well you'll see how it comes out with the total numbers, but what I'm looking for is a time sequence that's representative of the samples and then I want to multiply that by uh, the time of my sample period. So um, the sample period is 1 over fs, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and multiply this by 1 over fs. There we go. And so now I can build my complex signal that I'd like to uh, you know, do an FFT up. So I'm going to do a really simple one. I'm just going to do a two cosine signal. Um, and so, two times pi times to a thousand. Actually, no, let's set this as our FC. FC uh, times T, or our time vector. Uh, plus, or actually, why don't we do this a little bit? We'll do this as like an AM modulated signal uh, times the uh, cosine of 2 times pi times, uh, since our um, carrier is 6K, uh, let's do uh, 500 hertz times T. forgot to do my dot times. There we go. So now we have two, um, we have our time vector and we have our signal vector and they're both um, 30,000 samples long. Okay. So the next step is to go ahead and do our FFT. So I'm just going to do this as y equals FFT of this s um, or signal vector. Um, now one thing to point out is that if I were to simply plot y right now, and I'm going to show you what happens. Notice how this is totally useless information to us, right? So there's a whole bunch of just kind of you know strange. Uh, it's not a it's not a function, and you're not really seeing what's going on here. And this is because what I'm doing is I'm plotting this as if it's a time signal. Now what we actually have to do to um, uh, we have to we actually have to extract our frequency information out of this plot. Uh, there's also a couple of other things that we have to do, as well, um, such as centering our FFT so that we're not looking at it on a like a two-sided spectrum. Um, it can get kind of uh, it, it's a little harder to understand when you do it through the standard process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up for a one-sided spectrum, uh, and I'm going to extract the frequency information. Then you'll see how this thing is supposed to be properly plotted. So I'm going to X out of there.
Okay, okay. so what this did was I took the um, absolute value of my function, so I get rid of any kind of negative components on the FFT. Um, then what I did was I created a vector of P1 that is approximately half the length of the original. Um, so it's that first side. And then what I did was I normalized the, uh, amp or the, the amplitude of the signal. Because you know, the two-sided spectrum, uh, you have half and half, so now I'm going to normalize it and add the extra set. So by doing this, um, I can now extract my frequency information, which is simply going to be my um, sampling frequency or my uh, sampling frequency times a uh, vector that's going to be equal to my component or equal to half my spectrum. And I'm going to divide it by the total length so that I can get um, my final output, which should be the proper plot. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot my frequency comma p1, which is here. And now you can see that I have um, what looks like two um, peaks, um, which just like a DSBSC signal, this is what I have, or this should be what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on just this component. Looks like I, there we go. Right, so you can see I have one at 5500 and one at 6500. So if you remember my uh, message signal was 500 hertz, so I have my two frequency components for DSBSC. All right, so you can use the same process um, to go ahead and build any or do any other kind of FFT on the other signals that we're going to be doing in class.